Today we are shooting with a massive lens. If you're not new to the channel, you know that I love the Pentax 6x7. It's one of my favorite cameras for studio work. It's one of my favorite cameras to run out and shoot portraiture with outside. It is just one of my all time favorite cameras. Today, I'm back in my hometown of North Carolina. I'm borrowing my friend Peter's Pentax 6.7, and I'm also borrowing a very large lens from him. This is the 400 millimeter lens for the Pentax 6x7. I mean, <laughs> this thing is ridiculous. Instead of putting the camera on a tripod and screwing the lens on, you put the lens on a tripod and screw the Pentax on. It's that big. This would have been a perfect lens to photograph the eclipse with, but I didn't have a chance to do that. And this would also be an amazing lens to compress an entire landscape cityscape shot. But today we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna shoot portraits with the 400 millimeter lens for the Pentax 6x7. Eyes are closed? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so actually this is the camera that we shot that iconic photo on. Okay. But this is the lens we're using today. <laughs> Look at this, 400 what? millimeters. How does that work? <laughs> we're gonna have to put it on a tripod. But this is, it's gonna be, it's gonna be beautiful, I think. Cool, got the tripod lock on there, or the mount on there at least. Drops the lens. No, there we go. <laughs> it's like, uh, like bottom of the dress up. Oh, perfect. Yeah, but I'm gonna try to do a full body. Okay. So what if you face your chest out that way, and then you turn your, like, yeah, your, yourself like twist at the hip. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm just gonna be over here. Holy, wait, this actually is gonna be crazy. F4 320, so we'll do F4 250. That's the absolute lowest aperture is F4. With a 400 millimeter lens, you probably shouldn't shoot at F4 because it's gonna be pretty soft and also like, you'll probably miss focus, but you know I gotta let one go at the lowest aperture real quick, right? I think it's in focus. Three, two, one. Beautiful, okay. First of all, when you're shooting 400 millimeters, you really do not need to stop down to F4 for almost any reason ever. But I felt like we should try it. I mean, it looks like I missed focus a little bit and it's pretty soft, but the background has just been so compressed. I mean, it looks like large format. Wow. <laughs> I don't know, wait, wrong way. Oh yeah, I'm just not, I'm too close. Like this is, let me back up. Take one little tiny step back. Yeah, that looks good. Three, two, one, don't blink. I feel like this shot here really shows exactly what this lens is capable of as a portrait lens. I mean, the compression looks ridiculous. Um, like absolutely ridiculous. Do you see the, uh, how beautiful like these, like the grass is right here. So for this one, I'm like leaving a lot of foreground in the image, like a lot more than I usually do because I just want to see the fall off in the foreground. I wanted to get a little bit more of the foreground in this shot just to show the compression and the fall off as it reaches Demola, who's modeling. I've already said it like 10 times, but the fall off behind her too is just so shallow. It's, it's amazing. I mean, this was, I, I want to say this one was shot at like F8 or something. What a ridiculous lens. Um, I'm literally just too close. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. Three, two, one. I felt like that was shaky. At a 60th, let's do F4 at a 250th really quick. All right, that's great. Just like that. Let me uh, shoot that same frame on the different lens. Like the lens goes on the tripod and then you just attach the camera to the, yeah. It screws on, like it, now the camera is the small thing, which with the Pentax, it never is. It's always the big component. Oh, wow, this is, I feel a million times better now with this. Three, two, one, and. Comparing this shot with the 400 millimeter to the 165 millimeter is pretty cool. Obviously these focal lengths are vastly different, but I actually really love how the 165 turned out and it's kind of got me scratching my head as to if I need one. Probably don't need it, right? A little Cinestill 800 T-Ski. There we go. 
Wow. Oh, that's great. All right, ready? Three, two, one. All right, let's, uh, let's do direct sunlight really quick. We won't move too far. We'll just be in this field. I like shooting with the backlight of the sun um, because I just know exactly how it's gonna turn out on film if I shoot it right, but there's nothing like direct sunlight. Wow, okay. Be right back. God. I gotta back the up. Oh, that's gonna be so cool, okay. Three, two, one. Just gotta get this exposure right so that it's not too dark or something. It's so contrasty now. No, it's okay. <laughs> oh, awesome, okay. All right, I think I'm in focus. Three, two, one. Yeah, that's sick, okay. A thousandth of a second, holy. Actually, scoot this way, just so small. Not even that far. Right there, yeah. Two, one, and nice. Let's see if I can get up a little closer. Maybe stand right here, and I'll try to just get like blue sky behind you. Turn your face towards the sun a bit. Yeah. All right, close your eyes for a sec. And open them. And three, two, one. Yeah, like right, like right there. Scoot this way a little. Yeah, this way, right there, yeah. There, three, two, one. Wow, wait, I just totally did that without even metering. No, no, I like, I just didn't change the settings on the camera. That one's probably gonna be underexposed and maybe it will be a silhouette in a cool way. Gorgeous. This shot by far is one of my favorites. I did two versions of this shot, one where I underexposed it because I just forgot to change the settings before taking the photo, and one where I tried to get the right exposure for the shadows so you could see Damola perfectly exposed, but even then, there was just too much light filtering into the lens or something that just made it too hazy, or maybe I just missed exposure altogether, but this shot, this first one where I didn't have the right exposure put in is my favorite probably from the shoot, aside from maybe the one of the first images I shot um, where there's no grass or anything in the fort. Like you just see Damola with this ridiculously blurry background. This is definitely my favorite. It definitely leans more into the type of photographs I like to make, but wow. Let's have you stand. We'll have you stand like right here okay. and we'll have all this in the background cool. and turn towards the light. Oh, okay. I just need to step back a bit. The color is too nice right now. It's actually surprisingly easy to find focus because of how, like, if it's not in focus, it's obvious. Because it's so, it, the focal length is so tight. Three, two, one. Nice. And I kind of want to just change the angle because I loved, like, the direct sunlight. Oh, that's so nice. Let me try to do like whatever the closest portrait I can uh, is, but like chest up. Oh, this is gonna be so sick. Yeah, and just look right at the camera. Last shot, that was it. On these last two images, I'm not really sure what happened. This one has a, just a ridiculous light leak through the entire thing. And the next one has what looks to be like a light leak of the frame ending, but also the top of it is super dark. So maybe something with the curtain? Uh, I don't know, it's not my camera. So I can't say, and I also have never used this lens, so maybe it wasn't screwed on all the way. I don't know, but we don't see that in the other images. <laughs> so I don't know, I don't know. But this lens was so sick to shoot with because it's so different than any lens I've ever tried to shoot portraits with. If I'm shooting portraits, I'm usually on a tripod with a lens that's below 130 millimeters. And if I'm not on a tripod, I'm running around with a 90 millimeter or a 65 or a 55. So I feel like I say this in every video, but again, I love how these images turned out. It's not really like stylistically the sort of photos I like to shoot, but for a little lens test on my last day in Raleigh, this was so fun. To everybody who wishes I shot landscapes with this lens, where I photograph the skyline of a city and like have the compression just be insane, Really sorry that I didn't have a chance to do that, but you know, I'm more of a portrait photographer, so I thought it would be a fun challenge to try to shoot some portraits with this thing. Maybe that'll be a future video when I'm back in Raleigh and I get my hands on this lens again. Uh, but for now, 
Thank you so much for watching the videos. I've been having so much fun putting these out recently. I will see you next week for another video. And as always, I'm Linus and uh, I'll see you later.